Hi guys, I'm Tracy. Thank you for joining me today. So today's video is the fourth one in the series I'm doing about um, the brushes I have uh, depending on the different tasks. So today is about my eyeshadow blending brushes and this is a type of brush I feel like is very essential and in fact I would say having three would be the minimum if you really want to get a you know a more advanced eyeshadow look so at the end I'll recommend the three that I think would be great starter brushes for your um, your collection so the first type of blending brush I'm going to talk about are the paddle shaped brushes that are pinched and um, the next one I'm going to talk about the ones that are round so um, this is the um, just a very standard shape. I think the MAC 217 is kind of the well-known um, style that everyone kind of compares this one to. But this is the Honkoto J5523, one of their most popular brushes. And I think this is a staple. I have two of them and I use these to um, darken the outer V and to lay down my transition color right here and it works really great I think even if you have big eyes you can um, kind of like lay it long ways and do your transition color or if you're someone like that me, like me that has hooded eyes you know you put it this way and do your transition color that way you can also do the outer um, lower lash line and um, I think it's a really, 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 really versatile brush. And no matter what your eye shape is, you should be able to benefit from this shape brush. Um, and I have other ones, but they all are kind of this similar shape. I also have the S5523, which is the same style. It's just this is made out of horse and goat hair. So it's a little firmer and it's made out of this is um gold plated a gold plated ferrule so it's a little bit more expensive but it's a beautiful brush that's the reason i got it but it's not quite as useful as this one because it doesn't fluff up quite as much because it's got the horse hair in there but still a very useful brush um, in comparison to this one this is going to be a little bit more diffused whereas this one is going to provide a more concentrated um, application of eyeshadow so um, these two I highly, well, this one highly, highly recommend. Another great one is the Sonya G Worker Pro, and it looks very similar to this one. It's just a tad bit shorter, and it feels a little it's shorter, and it feels actually it feels a tad bit silkier and I think the density is pretty much identical but this one um, I think for a very similar um, re you know way I use it to darken up the crease the outer area I can use it right here um, it also blends pretty much I mean this one could could lay down sh um, a shimmer also and it could also blend so I would say this one's a little bit more versatile but um, these are both uh, fabulous brushes, uh, pretty interchangeable. I think whatever this can do, this can do fairly, fairly well also and vice versa. But um, you know, if you're looking to order from Beautylish and you don't want to um, get the 5523, I think this is a really great alternative. Um, another paddle shaped blending brush is the Wayne Goss number no. 6. I got this in hopes of doing um, like laying down shimmer because I love my um, Chikohoto GSN 9 so much. This one I talk about all the time and it looks very similar. This is blue scroll and this is gray scroll but for some reason this one just doesn't lay down color the same. It's, um, it's a beautiful brush. It's just not quite as good as my Chikuhodo. Um I could use it to lay down shadow, but I have something I'm going to mention soon that I think is better. And you can't get this one anyways, it's off and out of stock. So that's the Wayne Goss number six. Now I'm going to go over the round blending brushes that I use. And the first one I'm going to talk about is the Hakuhodo J5529. 
and this one is super useful if you have small or hooded eyes like I do. It's an itty bitty little blending brush. It's kind of flat on the top as opposed to the Wayne Goss ones which are a little bit more pointy. But this one is good to do very detailed um, detailed eyeshadow work like deepening out, de deepening this area. And that's pretty much what I use this for. Uh, if I want to kind of deepen this area, I'll use that and I'll, I'll use it for this, this little outer V area. Um, some people use this for lower lash line. I just... I just don't. It's a little fluffy for me, but um, if I had to reach for a brush, if I wanted to really um, kind of smoke out the outer portion of my eye, this is the one that I would reach for. Another one, super useful, and this was actually my first Fude brush, is the Wayne Goss 19. Um, this is the second to the smallest, so he has 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Um, from what I understand, the 20 is very similar to the 5529, and um, so this is the next one, um, slightly larger than the 20. And for me, this shape is, this size is the perfect um, crease eyeshadow blending brush. Um, I have two, and uh, they're so well made. I've had, I've had one of these forever and it's still in great shape. I've washed these so many times, um, so I can't recommend these enough. They're amazing. Um, and you know, depending on your eye shape, you can go with the 16, which is the largest of his goat hair blending brushes, which is like this. This is too big for my eyes, so I use it for concealer, but if you have very deep set eyes, you can go as big as the 16 and as small as the 20 and there's 17, 18 in between. The 18 is actually uh, a paddle shape that I don't have, but um, you know, I think he makes wonderful blending brushes and kind of um, caters to all different eye shapes. So that's the 19. And then um, the other two um, blending brushes that I have from Wayne Goss, these are Blue Scroll blending brushes. And this is the number three, and this is the number four. So the three is just much fluffier than the four. And the three is my first eyeshadow brush that I use. So when I want to, so after I put the concealer on my eyelids or the eye, eyeshadow primer, and I wanna lay down my first color, sometimes it's not even gonna show, but I wanna make sure it's kind of set, I will use this brush. I'll go in first with this and lay down my the lightest color and then I'll go in with something like this to kind of deepen out here and get more into the crease um, and then from there you know if I want to have a darker eyeshadow look then I would use um, the Wayne Goss 19 or the 5529 because um, goat hair brushes provide a stronger application of powder versus the squirrel but um, you know, I like using both usually at the same time. So this one I use first, then I'll go in with one of these, or even sometimes this, just depending on what's clean and what I feel like using. Um, and also, I hate saying this because I'm probably gonna wanna buy another one of these at some point, but these Wayne Goss Blue, Blue Squirrel um, eyeshadow brushes are so, they're such an amazing deal. Um, blue squirrel hair is you know one of the most sought after materials for brush making and this is $32 and this is 28 and they're I mean I, you can't find any better I, I believe Hakuhoto makes his brushes so you know you're getting um, the craftsmanship and the very high quality materials and for this price, it's a steal because if you go to other brands, you're probably going to pay $20 more each. So I would run to get these. I'm afraid that he is not going to really um, restock his blue squirrel, blue squirrel hair brushes. I've noticed that that material is becoming uh, exceedingly rare. And if I do find it, it's very expensive. So um, I think he might just not even make these or if he does bring them back, I'm hoping not, but they're gonna cost a lot more. So um, I would definitely pick these up sooner than later if you're looking for a really high quality squirrel 
hair blending brush. Um, on that note, I also want to mention if you are on a budget and you're not looking to spend, you know, around $30 for a squirrel hair brush, um, Koyudo makes a line called the Casual Series, and they're a little less expensive than um, their other series. And this is the C33, and it is made out of, um, I'm pretty sure it's gray squirrel, so it is super, super soft, but um, it's just a little it's a little dinky. I know one of my subscribers, Denise, said it looks like a little kid's painting brush. And yes, it does. It's not very densely packed. It's just kind of a bare bones, you know, just to get the job done kind of brush. It's not lacquered or anything. It's just, you know, a simple handle. And, um, you know, I can tell they didn't re really use a whole lot of hairs. But I'll show you how I use this if I do use it. Um, if I want to provide just a very soft um, eye, a shadow underneath on my lower lash line, uh, I'll, I'll use this. So like for example, I use the Mini Zendo. I'll pick up a little bit of that color and then I will lightly, kind of like just dusting it under my eye to give a very kind of light um, you know, just a very light wash of color. Um, and then, you know, if you have smaller eyes like me, you can use that, this to kind of get your transition color out on. It's just gonna take a little bit more effort because it's so small and it's so sparse. So you're gonna have to really kind of like, um, you know, work a little bit more, but it's a very, very soft brush. So if you have sensitive eyes, and you want to do that and you don't want to wear use a goat hair brush this is so soft it will not irritate your eyes i don't really have super sensitive eyes but i can imagine if you do that you know yeah it doesn't feel pokey or anything and my eyes aren't watering so i think this is a really good one you know if you for some reason you know don't want to get the number four you can use this for the outer V area like that. But if you can, I highly recommend these over this. So one more brush that I have that I wanted to mention is the Hakuhodo J5533. Now this one is it's on the smaller side, but it is a flat topped brush, so it's not tapered. Uh, but it is fully round. It's completely round. It's not pinched at all. And I hear a lot of people on YouTube talking about it and using it. The reason I don't use mine is because I prefer something that is tapered, especially because I need to get like in this area. Um, I prefer something tapered. I mean, I could use this, but because it's flat, it kind of just like covers a bigger area and because I have this I just rather use this one I I'm not gonna not recommend it if you like this shape eyeshadow brush I think it's a beautiful brush um, it's super high quality I just um, prefer a more tapered eyeshadow brush but it is a very nice brush if you are ordering from Hakuhodo so I'll, I'll recommend um, three starter brushes. If you are just starting out your um, eyeshadow brush collection, um, what I think would be the essentials is to have one fluffy squirrel hair brush, if you can find one. Um, these two are great. If you're not looking to spend much, then this one is a good alternative so that you have a really, um, you have a, a brush to really lightly apply shadow. Then uh, I would say the, like the J5523 to have a tapered um, brush, um, preferably goat hair to deepen up the crease very quickly and also get this area and deepen out the outer V. I think this shape is uh, ideal for that. So um, if you want to go Hakuhodo, the 5523. If you want to order from Beautylish, the Worker Pro I think is a great option. And then I, I think a small goat hair blending brush 
is also essential either like I use the 19 and the J5529 either one will work or you can get the uh, Wayne Goss 20 um, so for me from my eye, eye size this is a really good one for really deepening up the outer um, V area also if you want to like what I do is I kind of darken this area you know it's a small area so I would you know use something like this and for right here because if you're going to use a scroll hair brush it's, it's not going to be it's not going to come out very dark so I would say if you're you know looking to order with Beautylish, Wayne Goss 3, Worker Pro and 19 or the 20 if you are looking to order from Hakuhodo um, they have one called the J5522, which is, um, I feel like, a similar shape to this, and it comes in goat hair or a squirrel goat mix. So, you know, that, the 5523, and the 5529. So, pretend this is a Hakuhoro brush. So, I would say these three shapes, one squirrel hair um, brush for the bigger one, and you should be able to get your eyeshadow looking really good and this is what allowed me to really um, get the eyeshadow looks that I've been wanting that's my dog trying to come in so um, that's it really quick I wanted to mention I this is a more recent find I've been using this to wash my um, eyeshadow brushes with and it's um, one of those silicone like face scrubbers that this become really popular I think my mom got this from Daiso for like a dollar but you can find um, a bunch of different ones on Amazon for less than five dollars or about five dollars and this really really cleans your brushes very quickly um, in case you don't know about my um, brush washing video I use Olaplex um, shampoo to wash my brushes and um, I feel like that's like the best thing if you want to, you know, keep them in good shape, if you want them to be softer. Um, sometimes they actually get too soft. And then I switch back to the bar soap, the African black soap that I also use. But um, this thing has made the brush washing process faster because it really really helps get the product out very quickly and um, it's so soft and it looks a little prickly but it's very very soft so I, I feel like it is very gentle on the hairs and um, I'm really really enjoying this for washing my eyeshadow brushes so that's really it for today um, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already and give it a thumbs up and I will see you all next time. All right. Bye